Let me talk a little bit about diffraction gratings. Um, diffraction gratings, the good news is that the math for this is just like the double slit. There are some differences, but but uh, a diffraction grating is basically you take uh, a piece of glass and then you, you scribe these little slits in there, right? And they're evenly spaced and there could be thousands of these per centimeter, right? A typical amount is like maybe 10,000 per centimeter, these lines. So they're very, very, very close together. Um, and the math of this is just like the double slit. That is, we get maxima at d sine theta equals n lambda, where n is the order, right? d is the separation, right? And then the lambda is the um, lambda is the wavelength of light, right? And then um, theta is this angle that, that it projects the math. And I'll show you that in a second here. Um, but, but, you know, typically what we do is we've got this diffraction grating, and then over here uh, we've got a screen like this, and it'll, it'll project the light here. And if, the, if this is made up of more than one wavelength of light, it'll bend at different amounts, okay? Uh, the bigger the wavelength, well, let's look at that, right? Uh, the, the wavelength that we solved that for, th for theta, right? The wavelength is just sine minus one of n lambda over d. So... D doesn't change, right? This is the order of it, right? So the bigger the wavelength, the bigger the angle you get. Now there is some, there are some important differences between a diffraction grating and a double slit. This is maybe a double slit pattern that we get um, a maximum, minimum, maximum, right? Um, <clears throat> for a, for a, a, a diffraction grating, the maxima are much more sharp like this. And this is this is just like six of them, right? If you have like a, you know a thousand gratings. Um, you'll have almost nothing in there. And the reason for this is just that um, you get only the maximum, the constructive interference. And then for any of these other slits, there's always going to be something, another slit that's destructively interfering with it. And so you get very strong destructive interference if it's at all out of phase. But if it is exactly a full wavelength difference in distance, then you get these really strong constructive peaks, right? And this is the central maximum. This is the first order, the second order, like that. Okay, let's just hit the right arrow. This is a picture of what it'll look like. I'm going to actually do this with a laser beam. Okay, so um, what you're seeing here is it's sort of an interesting thing. Um, this outline here that we have a dark spot and a bright spot, that's actually the, um, the uh, single slit diffraction pattern superimposed on our, our, our diffraction grading pattern. Okay, uh, this is one slit. This is two slit. You can see as, as we add more and more slits, we do more destructive interference on those things that are in between the maxima, right? So this is zero, this is one, this is two, right? And then, well, we will show you what happens to these guys, okay? Um, this is the schematic here. So basically this acts, this, there's two patterns here. There's the interference pattern, and this is the, um, these little spikes here are happening at d sine theta equals n lambda, right? But there's also, this is acting like a, um, a slit, right? And so you've got this, uh, what, uh, lambda over d or something like that. Um, you've got this, this uh, width of this slit here, and you've got that single slit diffraction pattern happening on top of it, right? That's what's going on here. So IB seems to think that you want this. This is an IB test. You need to, I guess, be able to explain this, why there is this... Um, diffraction pattern, but let's just go back and look at the actual pattern, okay? Uh, this is it, right? So you've got a little loop and then down and then a central maximum. Then this is the, and then down and then, right? So this is the, this is that uh, pattern for a single slit, right? And I haven't drawn this correctly because I haven't drawn these in the right proportions, but, but that's the idea, okay? And then finally, the, what, we, what you do with diffraction gratings is you use them in its spectrometers. So you can um, put them in. You notice that this is, our, this is our first order. Here's our second order. The second order gets, gets fainter and fainter because the, the less light diffracts out to the edges like that. Okay. Uh, and so in the center, we've got uh, all the light, of course, goes right through the center. And then the first order, we get a rainbow. Notice that the red is further out because it's, what is the angle is... Uh, n lambda, the inverse sine of n lambda over d. So the bigger the lambda, and red is a bigger wavelength, the farther out it is, right? Um, and we'll look at this. We'll actually look at rainbows, right? We'll also look at um, uh, discrete spectra like this, okay? 
and you'll get uh, the patterns will repeat themselves out. It's very hard to see anything beyond the first order. The second order is very faint. Third order is, you know, could technically exist, but it's it's so little light goes out there that it's very hard to see. Okay, and I think that's all I really need to say. This is a picture of a spectroscope. So you've got a grating there, a telescope here, uh, or this could be just a CCD sensor, right? And you can measure these angles that these bright slits happen at. We're just going to kind of look at it and go, oh, look at that. Okay. Um, and with these spectroscopes, you can actually get these spectra. And what's cool about this is, of course, the different elements have different spectral lines. So if we look at a star that's far, far away, right, we can actually see, oh, that star has hydrogen in it because we've got absorption at these at these lines. It's got, oh, this star has sodium in it or something like that, right? Okay. So, so these lines um, that are emitted, we can actually break the light up and we can see dark line spectra, which we'll, we'll talk about next year, and bright line spectra. Um, and this is you know, a bit like a neon light, right? It's made of these discrete spectra. And these represent transitions between the orbitals of the atom. So the electron goes from this orbital to this orbital. It gives off a photon maybe of that wavelength, okay? Um, and spectroscopes are how we, we use diffraction gratings in spectroscopes. Right, the grading is right there, and and these things are very expensive. A really good grading, you know, can be thousands of dollars um, to get really good lines like this. But anyway, I think I've said all the words I need to say about diffraction gratings.